Now the big question is, do you think my broad beans are ready to go outside? It's only been a week and the bloody onions are going mental as well. Anyone would think that I've fed the broad beans and the onions somewhat on steroids, but no, this is the luxury of starting them off indoors rather than up on the plot. They develop into fairly healthy, and in some cases very leggy, plants. But once they go outside later on today, they should take a lot better than if I just sowed the seed direct into the ground. Especially, like I've said before, when I know I've got mice up on the plot. Anyhow, today, these raw beans are going to get planted out. Now you remember a couple of videos ago I visited my local garden centre and bought a whole bunch of seeds, bulbs, onion sets. I also bought a couple of trays of these, these Lobelia plug plants. There's tray one, and there's tray two, and they're looking fairly healthy. Anyhow, today I need to plant these on, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So when it comes to planting on those lobelias, all I've done is got myself a tray, filled it with multi-purpose compost. I'm going to take my lobelia tray, I'm going to pinch this individual module from the base and then gently pull out and prise out the lobelia. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Then make a dimple in the soil. Plant it. Squeezing it very gently. And there you go. The first one is done. I'll repeat the process and um, plant out as many of these as I can. I'll come back to you in a minute. And that's the first tray planted up. I've never grown lobelia before. And one thing I would warn you about is once you've placed them into these individual cells, when it comes to watering them, you need to have a very, very fine spray on your watering can, um, or as I've used, this bottle. Even that seems to be a bit too uh, much for them, but they seem to be okay at the moment. I'll chart their progress over the coming weeks and see if I get any lobelia. Now last week I set you guys a challenge. I asked if you could identify the seedlings which were just breaking through the soil at that time. One week on, as you can see, they've grown some legs. These guys need to be on a catwalk, not in a pot of compost it seems. Now, if you said sweet pea, give yourselves a big pat on the back. In fact, you go straight to the top of the class, you get a gold star, and you get to leave school early. If you said anything other than sweet pea, then I'm afraid it's detention for you. <laughs> See me after school. Last year, Mick Watson, AKA the Grumpy Gardener, sent me a packet of lupin seeds. Here you go, here's the message. Lupin seeds, 2016. 50 seeds plus one for luck. Sow in March and talk to them every day. Happy growing. Mick, your seeds are going to get planted right now, mate. Well Mick, there you go. I've only planted half the seeds from the packet because I just figured, knowing my luck, I've probably done something wrong and some of these might die. And if they do, at least I've got these left. 
Anyhow, what were your instructions again? So in March and talk to them every day. Right, are you listening? Undercover, what to do now in the greenhouse and polytunnel? I haven't got a greenhouse or polytunnel loopings. I've just got a bloody kitchen shelf. Right, this guy is saying how to avoid running out of room. April is a real pinch point for undercover growers with dozens of just sown seed trays plus youngsters still hogging shelves. That's you guys, which you can pack away once the spring rushes over and the next stage is underway. Hey, lupin seedlings, wake up. Stop falling asleep. I think it's time to go up to the plot, don't you? Well, here we are, back up at the plot. I was here yesterday fixing the second part of my fence. Take a deep breath, people, you're not gonna like it. There you go. So that's what I showed you last week that I've been working on. Don't mind that, that's just a temporary, it's not even a gate, but it's just to kind of uh, just block that hole, I guess. But um, if any rabbit wanted to really come in, he could. Anyhow. This is the section that I did yesterday. Yes, I know it's different to that, but I didn't have another uh, pallet that looked like that. And I had to use or work with what I got, which was that pallet there. So uh, it fitted perfectly into that existing gap. I also knocked up, well I say I, my dad knocked that up. It's me and my dad came up here yesterday and just constructed this. I know it's not perfect, but like I said, it does a job for me. And uh, it's just got to stop the rabbits. So long as it does that, I'm happy. I still got to um, put some wire mesh along those slats there. I have put some wire mesh, not that you'll probably be able to see, but on the other side of this. So I've partly done that. And like I said, that is now complete. All I have to do now, in fact, I think my dad's gonna build the gate. He's gonna build the gate uh, for, uh, yeah, for the plot. Anyhow, that's how that's looking. The weather's not looking too good, people. It looks like I may be dodging showers. It's not ideal conditions to come up to the allotment and plant broad beans, but, I don't do it today, uh, I'm not off work for another week and by then the broad beans will look like triffids. Uh, so yeah, let me just spin the camera around and show you the plot. Still only those five tulips have flowered, although I think this one is almost there. And yeah, like I said, not ideal conditions because the soil is going to be very heavy and very wet, but I've got to do it today. Right, let's chat, let's get planting broad beans.
I'm sure I said I'd be dodging showers today. And yeah, you've guessed it, I'm in the shed because it's tiffing it down outside. I did manage to plant two rows of broad beans before the rain came and I'll hopefully show you those at some stage today if this rain does abate. It doesn't look like it's going to anytime soon. So um, I'll just sit in the shed for a while and have a chat to you. I just want to thank you for all your suggestions with regards to uh, vegetables stroke fruits which might climb up those frames that I got uh, last week was it or certainly the last video I don't know a couple of videos ago anyhow I think I've narrowed it down to three cucumbers melons or butternut squash um, I think the melon you really need to grow inside a greenhouse because it needs a lot of warmth and a lot of heat so I don't know maybe that one will fall by the wayside just depends if we get a hot summer or not uh, but certainly cucumbers and butternut squash are a very strong possibility also I forgot to mention about the big onion challenge when I was in my kitchen earlier so yes if you fancy entering this little challenge there is no prize so don't get too excited I'm attempting to grow a big onion from just a standard set, not your typical kind of Kelsa or Ailsa Craig onions that do grow into huge monsters. This is just me trying to grow a big onion from a bog standard set. So you've got your Sturrons, your Centurions, your Stuttgarter Giants. Um, so yeah, if you fancy taking part, please do so. It's hashtag big onion or the big onion challenge and what we'll do is later on in the year is pull out pull all our onions and uh give them away and the biggest one like i said just wins bragging rights really so yeah do take part if you fancy that Yeah, I don't think this rain is going to stop anytime soon, so here you go. A quick shot of the broad beans getting watered. And these guys will probably last about half an hour after I've gone before the rabbits come and finish them off. But I hope you rabbits enjoy them anyhow. Yeah, okay, this rain is not messing around now. It's decided to stay. Um, I'm going to go home. I'm going to get wet going home as well. Anyhow, thank you for joining me. If you have, remember to like, share, comment or subscribe to this channel if you fancy doing so. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.